Uh, it's Phil Lindsay here with Peep Magazine. We're here at Rain Meadows with a blockbuster press conference with David Venn from the Boxing Board. Now, first interview with us here, David. What's the... Uh, with anybody else for that matter. Uh, uh, well, there you go. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Peep exclusive. So... What do you do when you come here? Obviously, you come to the press conferences, yeah. the weigh-ins. What's your job and what do you make I'm, sure happens? I'm chairman of the board's Northern Area Council, mm -hmm. and my job is an inspector as well. So I come here as an inspector, effectively making sure that the, all the board's regs mm -hmm. are, are kept to. Um, help with the weigh-in or organise the weigh-in, um, check the, the, the boxers' shorts and make sure they get their medicals, all that sort of thing. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's probably a lot of the unseen things that the, yes. the standard fan won't know what goes on in the background sort of thing. And I try and stay out the limelight. Yeah, I, I'll have an <laughs> this time. So, you, I mean, again, obviously what stays behind closed doors and things like that, but you must have seen so many things over there. So how, many, how many years have you been doing what you do now? About 35, I think. Yeah, so you'll, you'll, you'll have seen one or two yeah. things over the years. Yes, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And anything that you could share with us? Well, Standout uh, moments well, and things? And... It's astonishing what does happen. I recall um, a fight when Glenn McCrory was topping the bill. Yeah. One of the guys came up and um, the, the doctor examined him and he was fine, okay, and then just checked his eyesight. And the guy was effectively blind. Um, and the, the, one of, one of our guys... Fight? He was going to fight. Oh, he was, so it was he before was the fight. Yeah, yeah he, he was. He was due to fight, and the doctor called an optician who we had with. He was the chairman in those days. Yeah. Have a look at this guy's eyes. He had a look at him, and he said, "Well, he's he's virtually blind in one eye and can't see very well out the other." It just shows the mentality of the fight. Yeah, 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 he's willing yeah, to get yeah, in yeah, there, and yeah, it's, yeah, 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 he does yeah. what he has to do. And we, we had another one where the board took his license off him, um, and he wanted to continue fighting. And you know, we, we said effectively, you know, you, you can't do that. I mean, it's, you're at risk. You've got a change in your brain yeah. um, in the scans. And he said, well, what I'd like to do then is to act as a, as a guinea pig. Um, I'll keep fighting and you keep checking and see if, in fact, the change does get worse. And effectively, see if I finish up punchy. Oh, well, again, all in the... Interest of science, I suppose, <laughs> so, yeah. and, and then getting paid. So we sit on your bike. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, yeah. That, obviously, with, with that, obviously, the, the boxer safety, the medicals and things like that, that's something that's been coming out more into the open forum, especially when you've yes. got other boxing boards and things like that. Obviously, you've got, you've got the Malta Boxing mm -hmm. uh, Commission and things like that. Mm -hmm where you've got them putting on shows in the UK, but you've also always had the British Boxing Board of Control have had put on shows in other countries as well, so it's not unheard of to happen. No, but, no it isn't. But what do, you, what do you think about the other boxing boards coming in? Well, the Maltese Boxing Board effectively is unlicensed. There have been shows put on by occasionally by other boards which are recognised, for instance, recognised by the EBU. The Maltese Boxing Association isn't recognised. They're not affiliated with the EBU. Right. So their fights are unlicensed. And you will find on their shows a number of boys whom the British Boxing Board have refused licences. They've failed medicals or whatever. Yeah. And they've gone on and got a licence, for what yeah. it's worth, with the Maltese Commission. So... They appear, you know, but they are, in our terms, unlicensed. And most of them, were they to apply for us, would fail. Um, there's, a, there's a guy who was a very well-known amateur. Um, I can't remember his Christian name, but his surname, I'm sure, is Weaver. And he was an excellent amateur, applied, applied for a British license, but failed the medical. I think, again, on the site grounds. So he has gone to the Maltese Commission and boxes with them. So he boxes in England mm -hmm. for the Maltese Commission, but he can't get a British Boxing Board licence. It's, it's, it's similar to the, the, the... It's probably not the best comparison, but you get, like, cigarettes. You get, like, the British ones that you get, you know, like, gone through the stringent tests and things like that. They're like, still not good for you. Oh, but so you they get kill the, you officially. But yeah, but the foreign <laughs> ones that you get coming over, they've got a lot more chemicals yes, and awful yes, things yes, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So, But they wouldn't pass the British judgments... But you still no. get people in Britain smoking them. Yes, they get smuggled in. 
unlicensed, if you like. Yeah, you see, exactly. Um, unlicensed tobacco. Yeah. Um, so while we are behind the scenes, out of the way, we, there are a lot of things we have to keep our eyes out for. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, and obviously the, the landscape's changing all the time. Yes, yes. The, 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 the regulations are getting more and more stringent. Um, but they are in most things in life. Though, yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, because litigation is, is, is so for, for, uh, to the forefront now. Yeah. Um, anything goes wrong and someone sues. You have to cover yourself, don't so you? So we, we have, not only do we have to um, uh, record the weights, we have to forward the weights to the board in Cardiff so they've got them. Um, we're supposed to make sure that two boys don't box with the same colour shorts. Mm -hmm. What we try and do is to make sure if they've both got black shorts... Uh, we can tell the difference, yeah, black yeah. and white, black and yellow, that sort of thing. Uh, there's another funny story there. We had two boys, one of them was a local, I'll not name him, and the other one came in, uh, I think he came in from abroad, I'm not sure, and they're supposed to bring two pairs of shorts. Yeah. And sure enough, the, the British boy, our boy, had two pairs, a black pair and a white pair. And the guy who was going to fight him had two pairs, a black pair and a white pair. Uh, no, sorry, I've got this story wrong. They both had two pairs of shorts, and they both had two black pairs. Ah, right. So we said one of you was going to have to change. So there was no away kit because... The, the, that's right. Yeah, they, they, they were, they were all, all their four pairs of shorts were black. You know, only boxers could do it. Yeah, um, and, uh, but, but again, it's, that's one of those things that you have in, in part of the communication process. Yes. If you had that happen again, you'd, you'd make sure that you stipulate it to them, make sure the two shorts are two different colours, and that's when, how you make progress. When a boy comes in front of the area council now for his interview prior to being granted his licence, we always say, now, when you go to a show, take two pairs of shorts and make sure they're two different colours. Because you live and you learn. You live and, and you learn. You know, we'd always just said, take two pairs of shorts. And um, thinking people would put two and two together, yeah. but you sometimes get five. Yes. <laughs> again, we had two boys. It might have been here, I'm not sure. One of our local shows, two Hungarians came in, a middleweight and a heavyweight, and they only had one pair of shorts between them. So... One of the guys, we didn't know, one of the guys, he showed us a pair of black shorts and the other guy showed us a pair of black shorts. We didn't know didn't it was the, the same, same, shorts. same shorts, no. Um, they showed us separately and one of the guys boxed him and then handed him over and the other guy boxed him. It like a tent for one of the guys, are like butchy yeah, snuggle as something from the other. A wet tent as well, yeah. Blame <laughs> So after all you've seen in the 30, 35 years you've been doing this, obviously British boxing, has it ever been in such a good... No, no, no. We've got more boxers than we've had a rough guess since about 1960. The last time we had a 1,000 British boxers, which is what we've got now, yeah. approximately, was about 1960, possibly a year or two earlier. We've got more shows the last few years than there's been since the 60s. Um, we've got more quality boxers, a higher quality of boxers, more of them yeah, than we've had depth. for many years. Greater depth of decent boxers. Yeah. So we've got more world champions. Okay, there are more world titles nowadays, but we've got more world champions than we've ever had in my yeah. lifetime. Um, and quite a few coming, coming quite through Quite a few well. coming through, you know. And, for instance, you've got young Tommy Ward. Who knows how good young Tommy's going to be? Um, he's... He's a bit tasty, he's a bit, yeah. a bit special, you know. Um, and he's he's just coming into his, his man strength and everything yes, now. He is. So he's, yes, he is. He's learned it the hard way by, when I say the hard way, he's had to go the distance because he's, you know, he's, he's not he's had the strength he to, turned to, over to bang guys over. Yeah, yeah, that's right, he did. But that, um, that puts in a situation where, you know, you've, you've had some of the local boxers who've won the first three, four fights by knockout, and it, it's great, it's great for the fans, but you can pick up bad habits because of the... the it's yeah. easy. If you, want, if you want to build a career, you want to make sure you win in every round. So you're fighting different styles, and you're able yes. to win every round yes. with that. If you can, if you can get a stoppage along the way, then great. But make sure you can comp, you can beat the style first. That's put in front of you, and then. But yes. again, if you if you hurt your guy, you have got to get him out there as well. Though, oh you? yes, yeah. One of the things we always say that the time to judge a boxer how good he is is when someone hits him back. It's all very well when I'm hitting you. I'm hitting. Oh, it's great. Yeah. I'm loving this. I, I like hitting you. When you hit me back, uh, maybe I'm not quite so keen now. I think I'm not sure I want to box. Well, you go look at Joshua's last fight. It's yes. the first time that he's yes. had somebody yes. stand and actually hit him back. In. And he passed the test. He passed the test. He showed some potential areas he needed to, to learn and things. Oh, yes. 
but it's more it's better for him to learn those lessons now That's than right. certainly in his next fight against Charles Martin. Yes, uh, I, personally, I think that's come a shade too soon for him. He would be better off having a couple more learning fights. It reminds me a little bit of Nathan Cleverly won the world title yes. that little bit too early. Too soon, yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, once he's won a world title, you have to ask, what are you going to do with him next? You can't then go back and have him box a, a six-rounder against a, a chap who's nothing special. He's now a name. He's now got a title. He's expected yeah. to do well. He's expected to box decent guys. And there's a lot of very good guys out there, you know. Um, a lot of uh, guys who are unknown to the, certainly the British public as well. Indeed, yeah. yeah. But he, if you take the ones that are... Um, Perhaps he, perhaps he could go in with, a, with Klitschko, because Klitschko's not a genuinely big banger. But if you put him in with someone like Tyson Fury, then you're putting him in a fight that's probably genuine 50-50. And it's not genuine 50-50 as to who wins on points. It's 50-50 yeah. who takes the other guy out. Yeah. You know? And personally, I would rather have seen him have a bit more experience before going with the, with the guy who might genuinely take him out. But at the same point, you get offered a world title fight. Yes. It's hard yeah, to turn hard it down. To turn it it down. Yes. yes. Because he's a professional fighter, he's in it to earn money, and this is going to pay him a lot of money. Deservedly so as well. Yes, I, I, think yes. more, I think a lot more fighters should get more money, but here comes Mr. Jeffries again. I know, but you only get it in two minutes. <laughs> but this is the uh, first, maybe the last, but we'll certainly have you on board again there, David. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Cheers, man.